Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Stickler. I am the medical director at NeuroHacker Collective, and I'm also the co-founder and chief medical officer for the Apiron Center for Human Potential. And what I want to talk to you about today is a pilot study that we did with the Qualia product. We were very excited about using Qualia in our clinical practice. We were seeing pretty amazing outcomes with our clients, uh, self-reported outcomes that were significantly better than past nootropic supplementations that we had used. And so we wanted to really dig deep and find out what was going on. So in the study design, what we did is we started off with a 32Q, uh, 32 lead QEEG. So with the Q, we did a mapping prequalia. Then we had the participants take their dosage. And four hours later, we did a repeat of the full QEG brain mapping. And then after they were on the Qualia for 30 days with their days off as well, we did a follow-up QEG to see what happened over time. We also did what's called a psychophysiologic stress profile. Now, this is something that we find highly valuable in our clients. And we deal with high-performing people. We deal with biohackers. We deal with... Um, professional athletes and this is a highly valuable test because what it does is it shows physiologically what's happening in the stress response of the body and in this we we hook our clients up to a machine that looks like a lie detector and it's measuring skin conductance it's measuring skin temperatures it's measuring respirations of both the chest and the abdomen it's measuring heart rate variability it's measuring uh, muscle tension and on top of that, we added a capnography study where we actually look at the exhaled CO2. And I'll tell you a little bit about capnography a little later. So a summary of what we found just on the cue by itself, uh, four hours after the first dose, we found decreased slowing uh, frontally and increases in the beta-1 band. Now, this is really a very positive finding because it's typically indicative of improved perfusion and more efficient cognitive function. We also saw uh, changes at four hours after the first dose of qualia that those changes persisted for the 30 days. So these weren't, we expected a little bit of a difference from the four hour post and the 30 day. We didn't see that dramatic of a change after being on it for 30 days, so it was very encouraging to see just four hours alone was able to induce the, the changes that we saw with long-term use as well. We also saw decreases in the lower bands of the EEG, so the delta, theta, and alpha frequencies, and increases in the beta bands, which are the higher frequencies. Typically, this is associated with increased attention and cognitive efficiency. So this is what we look for in improvements in those areas. We also saw decreases in the really high bands of beta. Uh, this is commonly seen in people that have a great deal of anxiety, um, hypervigilance, and we saw that come down. So this is a, a sample of the Q mapping that we do. And this is a map of summary information of one of the clients. And this is pre-qualia, and this is post-qualia. And what we see is these, this frontal alpha activity here and the relative power here, pretty high. I mean, the more white you have on the cue, the more normal the cue is. Uh, the green is getting into mild, and this area is getting into uh, significant increase in power. But then we see, just after taking the qualia, what happens with this alpha pattern. Significant reductions here. Another thing that we looked at in the psychophysiologic stress profile is temperature. So we were measuring the temperature at the fingertip. And what this is looking at is, is the sympathetic tone. So when we get stressed, and we get a lot of stress hormones released, and we get a hard sympathetic response, we get vasoconstriction. So our fingertips get cold. It, it, it keeps the flow from going to the fingers. Well, before the qualia, and this is a post-stressor on the qualia, we found that people were constricting down and hitting around 77.7, so it's in the high tension group. Then the study participants, after being on the qualia for 30 days, they were recording temperatures of 86 degrees after the stressors. 
mean, we're talking about a, a nootropic supplement that is showing indications that it's actually mitigating the stress response by working on these, the, the brain and this whole combination of improving cognitive function, improving neuroplasticity, improving um, stress responses in the brain by balancing. So as a summary of, the, of this pilot study, we saw objective improvement in brainwave patterns, improved cognitive performance, objective and subjective improvements in stress response, improved respiratory rate and, uh, and capnography. Now I didn't talk much about respiratory rate and capnography, but the interesting thing that we saw was the people doing the capnography were measuring respiratory rate and were measuring expired carbon dioxide. And people who tend to get hypocapnic, which means they run around with a baseline of low uh, carbon dioxide levels, they tend to vasoconstrict in the brain, so they, they inhibit their blood flow to the brain. And we know from a performance standpoint that you really need to be over about 35 millimeters of mercury on your baseline CO2. And we typically take them through stressors, but in this study we were looking at just baseline responses. And in this, we found that the respiratory rate, now this was something also we didn't expect, we found the respiratory rate went from an average of 10.2 down to an average of seven breaths per minute. Now we know that you know five to nine breaths per minute is kind of the ideal breathing pattern of a relaxed state. And we had people in the average respiratory rate pre-qualia was about 10.2. And post qualia, we had it down to around seven, a little bit over seven on average. But that was pretty dramatic. Uh, we also saw on the capnography, we had five of the nine participants were less than 35 on their, on their CO2. And three of those five actually brought it up above 35, so into a healthy, healthy level over that period of time. And this, this is correlating a lot with that stress response improvement that we're seeing. So we saw that the response is also correlated well with brainwave pattern improvements. And the interesting aspect of the study was the improved sleep quality. So I hope this gives you an idea of what we're looking at uh, with the Qualia product. And these are, this was prompted again by my experience in my clinical practice with the Qualia product. I was seeing these reports and typically when I've used nootropics in the past, and I've used, I've used many nootropics in my clients for brain optimization, and most of the supplements that we've used, I've had about a 50-50 uh, reported positive response with them. Not that many of them were negative, but many of them just said it didn't do anything for me. And what I was finding with the Qualia is that we were getting about 95% positive feedback on that. So, we looked at that and said, okay, something's going on here that we need to look at. And we had actually started the path down this study prior to me even connecting with Neurohacker Collective. Uh, so I'm thrilled to be a part of the team now. And hopefully this is going to open up to larger, more controlled um, clinical trials that we can, we can see some very solid statistical data from.